Good morning, the internet. It has been far too long. I'm very, very sorry. I'm still fighting the strange cold, which is initially why we just cut things off because I couldn't talk for like a minute, let alone five, without hacking everywhere. Hopefully I'll get through this one. I am still fighting a bit though. Uh, and then I turned in my dissertation and then I had to move. And now I'm in Anne Marie's house, but I'm moving again on Saturday to Edinburgh and it's just been a little hectic around here, uh, but we're going to try and get back into the swing things. So here we go with my apologies for the long and unplanned hiatus. Uh, my dissertation, as you know if you were listening to all of these, uh, was supposed to be, intended to be, planned to be around virtual water and international law. That still happened. Uh, however, I really focused in quite a lot on theories of power and hegemony, which I wasn't planning to do in the beginning, uh, to give it a framework, uh, and was looking at how international law can be a tool in assisting with or fighting against uh, issues of power and hegemony. So I thought we would have fun, fun, fun for me, I don't know if it will be fun for you, uh, in the next week or so on Ramblings, going over issues of power and hegemony and doing some fun power theory. Seriously, I love it. I get very, very geeked. Whether or not you will, I'll let you decide that. Um, and then, but, so by the time we're done talking about power and hegemony, um, we'll basically be at time for my classes at Edinburgh to start. Uh, and then who knows what wisdom I'll have to depart because I'm going to be learning lots of new things too, so it'll be lots of fun. If anything that I say in the next week or so is really interesting to you, you are more than welcome to read my dissertation. I don't know why you would want to, but you can if you'd like. All right, so for today, power. There are, in fact, multiple forms of power. Did you know? Well, you're about to if you didn't. Uh, in 1974, a guy called Lukes published an essay called Power, A Radical View. It was, wait for it, radical. Uh, in that he argued that there are very different kinds of power that operate in different spheres and levels and through different means. Uh, we tend to not necessarily think about all of them very well, but we should because they're all over the place. Uh, certainly 1974 was not the first <laughs> theory of power uh, or thing that got at multiple levels of power, uh, but this is what for me is a very helpful framework in understanding and just it sets out a three-tiered typology and I find it rather useful. So here we go. Dimension one, material power. Uh, the ability to punch. <laughs> uh, it's the brute force stuff that usually people think of when they're thinking about power, right? So on an international level, it's referring to military and economic and technological prowess, right? The ability to go in and invade somewhere. Um, the ability to completely buy out a nation's entire GDP. That kind of thing is material power. It's the brute force stuff. Uh, and then on a personal level, yet yeah, the ability to, you know, beat the crap out of someone. and that kind of thing. You know, it's a, a loan shark holds, you know, material power over people who are in her debt. That kind of thing. Uh, the next two types of power, in Luke's view, um, are also separated by a guy called Joseph Nye, uh, kind of like the Professor American foreign policy guru dude. Uh, he calls it soft power, is this next one. So the material power, the brute force, is hard power. And um, the next two kinds are soft power, according to Nye. Clinton's administration really delved into this deep. Um, Luke's has two dimensions that are considered part of this soft power. Um, so uh, dimension number two would be bargaining power. It's the ability to set the rules of the game, um, to say what is and isn't on the table. What are we going to bargain about? You know, what's in the discussion? Uh, so the ability to frame that agenda is bargaining power. Uh, a weaker state might have bargaining power by appealing to international law through human rights, for example, and that kind of thing. And then the third dimension of power, um, which is my favorite and potentially the most underexplored, but also the most pervasive, uh, is ideational power. Uh, the ability to shape actually how people are thinking and seeing the world and the basic fundamental narratives about what life is. So this is not just setting the agenda for what we're going to talk about. It's, you know, shaping what anyone even thinks of as being part of the agenda or never on the agenda. Uh, it's really about fundamental discourses and being able to shape those and how people know and understand the world. And it's all pervasive and sometimes people use it intentionally, sometimes they don't. It's all around us and it screws with our brain.